We really hope you. The greatest power you possess is your ability to choose. Join Lowe's more as he reveals how you can begin to maximize that power by exploring yourself on the deepest levels and committing to making lasting and positive changes. Get ready to achieve breakthroughs that will lead to accelerated growth and transformation because you are now tuned in to The Blueprint. Good evening and welcome back to the Blueprint Podcast. Um, once again, I'm a, I'm excited to be here on on this Sunday evening. Um, you know, hey, we know fall is here. Uh, I'm I'm sure we all have been experiencing the weather change. Not all of us. I'm just talking about here in New York, because <laughs> I'm I'm sure uh, I was talking to my brother. I think last night, and he's in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and and things haven't started to change. Actually, started to change there. But uh, this morning, when I woke up, man, when I woke up this morning, I was like, man. Well, even before I woke up, I, I the the other day, I think it was Friday. I was walking and I realized as I was walking, man, most of the leaves on the tree, just a, a week ago, most of the leaves are on the tree. Man, I was walking and I realized that most of the leaves are almost gone, right? And and uh, I'm like, wow, leaves are gone already. Um, and, and then I look, you know, I look today as I was driving, I was like, man, there's no leaves on the tree, man. And, and, and this morning I was looking and man, leaves was coming down like crazy. So fall is here. Right. And, and he, here's one thing I really like about the fall, right? The fall is so beautiful. I mean, just before, um, you know, just before you, uh, everything just starts from green and then all over the beautiful colors. This is a really a good time, you know, to take a like a nice drive up 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 to uh like Albany or something like that. Uh the Albany area. And as you're going along, man, you see the trees, the the leaves on the tree are yellow and orange and oh man, just so colorful, so beautiful, right? And most of all, so peaceful, right? And and so uh yeah, hope you guys are enjoying uh, fall, man, and this, I mean, this is just nice. I mean, I'm, I'm just enjoying, I'm enjoying the weather and it's been really nice enough to move around. I mean, I, I'm excited about, you know, just being able to move around, being able to get out and go for a walk, uh, you know, be able to have a good time. Right. You know, so I hope you guys have, have enjoyed, uh, your week. And now at the end of your weekend, um, yeah, this is just just nice, man. It, it you know earlier today, um, I got home, and uh, you know my wife and I got home. She preached this morning at the church, and we got home. And of course, we had our granddaughter. We had little Laney with us. Uh, we laid her down. She took a nap. And I'm telling you, one of the more powerful things, man, is that <laughs> we laid her down. She was taking a nap, and all of a sudden, you know, the kind of door, the ring bell rings and enters the other grandkids right and and then your grandkids friends i mean next thing you know we had a whole house full of uh of children man sundays is just awesome here in the more in the more house uh energy uh my grandkids running around having a good time eating you know uh just just awesome man i mean i i know you guys are experiencing the same thing uh but Man, I'm I'm loving it, right? I'm I'm loving every day I wake up, right? And and then I want to say thank you. Uh, I see Kevin, Kevin Bunch has joined us uh, as well as many others. You know Van Jackson, Judith Bostic, Savio. I mean, 
hey, Ray Jordan, you know, hey, man, it's just all, a lot of people have joined us tonight. And I want to say thank you to Kevin. Uh, I got honored by the uh, NCADD, the National Council of Alcohol and Drug Dependency, a few weeks ago. And Kevin and his wife was there, uh, you know, uh, supporting me on yesterday. You guys, I have been announcing about the King movement uh, at, at the Mount Vernon Public Library. Uh, we had a show the movie on yesterday. And uh, well, we didn't really show the movie, but we had a great discussion. You know, men came, came together and had a great discussion at the library on yesterday. How do we impact more men and how do we impact more young men? And uh, how do we impact our community, especially around? And I think that's the conversation tonight is going to be wonderful because one of the main, one of my main parts, and uh, you see behind me uh, my book from the Boys and Girls Club to the NBA, Life on the Now Road, the Lowe'smore Chronicles, right? And inside the book, you know, I tell my story uh, about what my dream was in order in, in in terms of becoming successful you know i wanted to play i wanted to play basketball i wanted to play in the nba right and as you research as you start to ask questions about how do you become a professional athlete because many of us many many young people today are saying uh you know I want to play in the NBA. I want to play in the NFL. I want to play Major League Baseball. You know, I want to play hockey. I, I mean, we always say what we what we want to be, right? Then there's always the question, how do we arrive there, right? And it the reality of it is, you can't you can't get where you want to go without an education, right? And for me, in my book, um, I, I tell my story, my obstacle. The thing that was keeping me from, uh, you know, moving forward and trying to be successful was my academics. Uh, I was struggling, you know, in regards to my reading, uh, struggling in regards to my comprehension. I was struggling in terms of my writing. And just to make a long story short, I, um, I went through elementary school, middle school, and finally I got to high school. Uh, and it ended up, um, my mom could not attend the counseling meeting, uh, as we prepare for my sophomore year, my mom couldn't make it, but Mr. Jones at the boys club came in her place. And, you know, he said to my counselor who at the time was Mr. Boyle, uh, he said, Mr. Boyle Lowe's is thinking about going to college. And, and, uh, you know, Mr. Boyle was like, ah, you know, I don't, I don't quite know about that. And I don't, I don't know if they have, have these levels today but there was level one two three four five um i was around a level i was around a level four and five and in order to be a potential college student you had to be the level one two or three right and and uh this was the chain reaction was that when he pulled my file and i was reading at a i'm in the ninth grade and i'm reading at a seventh grade level uh you know s some decisions needed to be made and I asked Mr. Ball, what, what could I do in order to improve myself, you know, as a student, right? Because you can't have books. You can't have the ball and without the books. <laughs> that's, that's the reality. You can't have the dance without the book. I mean, you know, so you got to get the books. You got to get educated. And so for me, my journey started in remedial studies for about two years before I end up becoming a level two and three student. And, and I, I write about that in my book and how important it is to overcome those obstacles. And so I'm avid, I'm an avid, uh, I'm an avid reader. Right. And, uh, you know, you can't take me to Barnes and Nobles. You can't take me near Barnes and Nobles. I'm going to buy a book. Right. And now, now that I have everything on my phone, right, I got everything on my phone. I can get a book on my phone when I want to get a book. Right. So I'm, I'm in this combating illiteracy. Um, I'm in this fight uh, to help people learn to love reading. Right. And not only just reading, 
but comprehension, right? And, and, and writing skills. So, uh, you know, that's my story. I'm excited about tonight because we're going to talk something that's near and dear to my heart, the importance of education, right? And the power of education and why, uh, why we all, including our kids must get educated in order to be successful as we move forward. So without further ado, right, I'm going to jump right in. I got a couple of quick things I need to do. And I want to start off with my book of the week or my books of the week. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you guys, you know, a lot of people haven't heard of Dr. Joanza Kanjufu, right? He's one of my favorite authors. Um, I mean, the topics have been amazing. I remember my father-in-law uh, giving me that book right there called To Be, to be Popular or To Be Smart, right? um you know the black peer group i remember i remember him giving me that book and i was reading through it and it was talking about most you know in terms of like myself uh most in turn african americans want to be popular more than we want to be smart right and and that was me i wanted to be popular i didn't care too much about being smart right i wanted people to know my name i wanted people to know notice me and 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 so when he gave me the book again i'm a, i'm an adult at this time so uh, he gave me a book i was at the boys and girls club and it helped me um focus on knowing uh what kids are dealing with right and it says you know when you to be popular to be smart is a very powerful book and 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 there's so many books up there the conspiracy to destroy black boys part one two three and Dr. Juwan Skunjufu was in Ma Vernon at least three times we brought uh, Dr. Dr. Kanjufu here. Um, I was at every one of them. Uh, he's just such a powerful person. Pick any one of his books. I mean, uh, it, it's just he's just an amazing author. And I just love the guy, man. He's just just wonderful right and to bring him back will be awesome too man because i'm i know he's still doing the work and then my education here's my word of the week right uh my word of the week is education right i just think education not just education but knowledge is important right you got to get educated but you have to become knowledgeable right? and that's my word of the week right and and uh you know, we can't go anywhere. We can't do anything unless we get educated, right? And then here's my affirmation of the week. It says, the more that you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you go, right? That's my affirmation of reading. Dr. Sue said that. Right. <laughs> I like that. Dr. Sue said that. And uh, when I was a little kid, besides the encyclopedias, everybody had a Dr. Seuss book. Right. Everybody had a Dr. Seuss book. So, uh, you know, when Dr. Seuss said it, it's got to be credible. Right? So uh, uh, here's the movie. Here's the music and movie of the week. Right. Uh, what you know, I, I, I'm I'm not a favorite of maybe Christian rap. Um, I'm a, I, some favorites in Christian rap. You know, I grew up, uh, you know, during the time, uh, you know, I was maybe in going to college when rap really became a big thing. And, but one of my guys I liked was KRS one. Right. And because they rapped about things that were going on in life, they rapped about learning, they rapped about being knowledgeable. They rapped about being educated, right? And so I just pulled him out of the <laughs> out of the woodworks, and he's still doing his thing, not just here in America, but all over the world. Chaos KRS One is still doing his thing, right? And he's still promoting knowledge, still promoting history, still promoting culture, and that's my music of the week. And then my movie of the week, uh, you know, one of my good friends, uh, Denzel Washington, you know, played. Uh, the George McKenna story, right? And he played a, a principal in a gang infested environment. And he went there 
and he turned around uh, that school with love. He turned around the whole culture, the whole community on love. He had to get out in the community and build relationships and, and create safety around the school as one of more, one of the more powerful schools, uh, one of the more powerful movies that you should take a look at. Uh, if you get a chance, pull it out, pull it out. The uh, It's there. You just got to pull it up and, and watch it. And that school that uh, uh, Dr. George McKenna started way back then is still a star school in Los Angeles, California. Just an amazing story, right? And I think I have a person of the week and Missy Copeland. Now, you know, of course I'm a, I'm a boys, boys club, boys and girls club member. And Missy Copeland is a boys, a boys and girls club member from the Bronx, right? And she's one of the most amazing ballerinas, right? Uh, you know, headliners. I'm not talking about somebody that just dances in a, <laughs> in a show, right? She's a headliner and she's good and she's talented and she's amazing right and she's a former boys club boys and girls club member and she's my person of the week all right let's get rolling i want to make again we this is every month should be breast care breast cancer awareness month i mean not just breast cancer but cancer period right we should always be aware we should always be getting our physical we should always have a physical ex a physical exam every every year right and and i just don't equate breast cancer to women right i equate it to men too i have a couple of friends who had who passed away from uh breast cancer as well as men uh so all that's important uh a part of your physical exam um and awareness i think uh even in the school district right they do the school district had uh breast cancer awareness month right uh celebrated at the school i think it's lincoln elementary school had a, a breast cancer awareness uh, uh program and a day or week uh yeah it just just awesome right and um and and you know i pray for those who lost some, someone who was you know, lost a family member to cancer and i celebrate those who overcome you know those who fought and overcome and uh, they're breast cancer survivors. And it, yeah, just powerful uh, to to see people overcome. And also it's powerful to see people overcome the loss of a loved one, uh, particularly to cancer. I mean, you know, that's just, just a horrible way, uh, you know, to go. And so uh, make sure early detection is the most important thing. Again, it's happening. We closer and closer. I started this about probably a month ago, a few shows ago. Uh, my wife has been being uh, in, installed as an assistant pastor at Emmanuel Pentecostal Faith Temple on next Saturday at 12 o'clock at Emmanuel. And uh, it the day is here, you know, a few more days and it's be here and she'll be assistant pastor. We're going to enjoy it. Well-deserved. Congratulations. Ah, then we have a special. This is going to be weird. It was weird even making this, right? But um, on, this is a special podcast on the 28th, the same day my wife is being installed. Uh, we're going to have a Blueprint podcast on Saturday morning, right? It's going to be a Saturday morning podcast. Um, we're going to be live on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, my wife is going to be hosting the show, right? And she's going to be interviewing me, right? Uh, going to talk about why I came up with the, I guess, why I came up with the Blueprint podcast and, and just many, many other things. Uh, we're going to, we're going to have a conversation about sports. You know, the Blueprint is, is definitely around uh, the seven spheres of influence, religion, spirituality, education, you know, government and law media sports arts and entertainment we try to bring people on in those spheres of influence right and talk about how they become successful and how they've overcome things to become successful right so uh 
yeah, I'm looking forward to having the, my wife grill me, uh, interview me. I mean, and uh, and we're gonna have some very interesting conversations. I got, I, I think I got a lot to say, but it's not about me tonight, right? It's not about me tonight. But uh, I believe that. Let me drop my pebble in the pond. There go. Here's my pebble, right? I'm. It's it's a little. It's a miniature basketball, but it's my pebble in the pond. I'm dropping it in the. I'm dropping it in the pond. I'm expecting the ripple effect tonight, right? Because this is going to be a powerful conversation. All right, and let's not forget. We always say we want to support young people, right? And then you should support every school in in, in Marlboro School District. If you're not in the Marlboro School District, you should be supporting young people wherever you are. If they're plays, fashion shows, bands, you should be supporting young people, right? We're always talking about them, right? But I say it's more important and more powerful than if you support them. We're showing the Wiz, the Wiz at the Dole Center in Mount Vernon um, and on Saturday, November the 18th and 19th at 5 o'clock on Saturday and Sunday, the Wiz. I, a few years ago, they did the Wiz with the twist. Now we got the Wiz. I know we all love the Wiz, right? And these young people are talented. Please come and check them out. All right, I think we're coming to a close. We're about to get ready. Um, if that's it, I got a video to show real quick. And we're going to have be right into, I'm going to my, introduce my guest for this evening. Greetings, Mount Vernon community. I want to personally welcome back all of our students, parents, families, and staff. I have the utmost confidence that this year will be one of progress and achievement throughout the entire district's 16 schools. As you may already know, this year, the Mount Vernon City School District is going back to basics. We're putting the focus of our curriculum onto reading, arithmetic, and writing. That starts on day one. This year, our teachers are more prepared than ever to deliver a quality education to Mount Vernon scholars. We are also going to strive to make learning fun for our students of all ages. Education is all about creativity and discovery, which can be very exciting if students are guided correctly. As our school buildings fill up again in the next few weeks, I want you all to cherish the memories that you are going to make on this journey. Undoubtedly, there will be students that make lifelong friends this school year, and that is special to me. This year, we have great plans for our scholars, and I hope we can deliver the best experience to everyone. I urge our students to challenge themselves academically, strive to go above and beyond what you even thought was possible. Our duty as educators is to foster that engagement in whatever ways we can. Each student is different, so this challenge takes each and every educator working together to cater to the needs of them all. Let's lay a firm foundation down for our students this year. We can build them up through the basics and prepare them to a wondrous things. Welcome back, Mount Vernon community. I am excited to partake in another tremendous year with all of you. I like to welcome to the blueprint, Dr. K. Veronica Smith. <laughs> Dr. Smith, how you doing? I'm well. Good evening, Lois Moore. Thank you so much for inviting me to the show. Um, well, I want to thank you because uh, I think I've been doing this for a little over four years, I think now. I'm in my fourth year and I've invited a number of uh, superintendents before you uh, to come on uh, the blueprint. And and uh, you're the first one that said yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, Lowe's, I'm a Mount Vernon Knight, and so are you. I had to do this, and I really, really appreciated that your wife came to help us with our opening. Um, Patrice uh, Moore came and did a phenomenal job. Oh, yeah, there we go. She, 
I, uh, so many people approached me uh, with her speech. It was very encouraging, enlightening. Um, but I always knew that she was an excellent. She is an excellent speaker, and I was delighted to have her. Yeah, yeah. She was excited about doing it too. She she called me and said, "Hey, you know, I'm going to do the opening for the school. You know, I'm out." She was all excited too, and so I know she would be prepared for it, and. You know, it's not it's not often that particularly alumni uh, get an opportunity to come back and share, you know, so we whenever we do, we get excited. You know, oh, absolutely. Yeah. We just remember like, oh, man, I remember being at the high school and, and, and so many wonderful things that happened at the high school when we were there, you know, so we always welcome coming back. I mean, because somebody came back for us, too, as well. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so absolutely. It, so so getting started uh just before we uh you know get into the educational part right uh, take us back a little bit man talk talk to us about um growing up talking about mom dad siblings you know you said you grew up in mount vernon so talk a little bit about mount vernon so you had to come through this process right? i certainly will yeah talk talk a little bit about that so let me go way back um my father was born in Nassau, Bahamas. His father was born in Jamaica. My mother was born in a place called Elutra. Um, Elutra, Bahamas. It's a, you know, the 700 islands in the Bahamas. I was born here in Mount Vernon, although I spent my early childhood in the Bahamas and went to preschool there. I came back at five years old to start school, and I went to what was then called Nathan Hale, which is now Parker. And I got my start in the 70 building, 70 West East 3rd Street, apartment HA. Um, some, when I was in about the third grade, we moved to what's called the Heights. Actually, I lived right across the street from Graham School. Graham is, the legal address is 421 East 5th, and I live 412 East 5th. So I went from um, Nathan Hale to Graham School, and then from there, we were bused back then over to Nichols. Um, I went to Nichols before going to Mount Vernon High School. So um, I did all my education in Mount Vernon. I had a great experience as a, uh, as a student at Mount Vernon High School. Um, actually, that's where I met you. But I could tell you a story that you probably don't remember. I went to Iona College when you were a senior and I was a freshman, Valvano begged me to speak to you because he wanted you to play for Iona. I got in touch with you and our boys wanted to play your boys and everything was all set up. I know you don't remember this, but <laughs> I do. Everything was all set up and lo and behold, when as we approached game time, they said that they were not insured. And so it was decided that the Iona um, boys would play you guys at the boys club. Now, I don't know really what happened that day because <laughs> you told me that they never showed up and they told me you never showed up. So <laughs> the game never took place. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, so, I, I I don't really remember, but uh, I do remember Coach Valvano. Yes, um, and I remember his energy and, mm -hmm. and his his passion. I mean, the way uh, he he spoke to you, you know that 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 fiery uh, tone. And I I was interested in Iona, um, honestly. I mean, it's right around the corner. Family would get a chance to see you play. I think one of our high school games was actually played in Iona mm -hmm. uh, at Iona College, uh, one of our home games. And right. it, yeah, I really I really liked Iona I, and I like Coach Valvano. Um, but, you know, at the time, everybody was on this kick of. You know, somebody offering you to play outside of your hometown and then you had been uh, in your hometown all your life. Mm -hmm. So I think the thing is, everybody wanted to experience something a little bit different. Um, I don't regret uh, making the choice to to go to West Virginia. 
Um, I had a wonderful career there. I also believe, man, based on the individuals that I played against at Iona College, I mean, moving forward, um, I knew a lot of the guys that played for Iona. I knew the power of Iona because every young man that played for Iona College, um, I would say 90% of them graduated and and they opened doors to a world of business uh, that maybe if they went somewhere else, they wouldn't have been able to to work in, in those careers. Uh, so yeah, no, Iona is a, a very special place. And uh, I don't know if I if I if I went back and and I was making a decision again based on my experience now. I I don't know I you know because I really wanted to go. I was born in Plymouth, North Carolina. Even though I I I spent most of my life since I was about five years old in Mount Vernon, right? So really, all I know except except for going back to Plymouth, North Carolina and visiting my grandparents and and relatives and stuff like that. I always wanted to go to North Carolina State, right? Uh, that, that was my first choice so that my grandmother and grandfather could see me play, right? But I mean, Ion is a very special, um, still today, a very special uh, college. And we've had, we've had some amazing people go there. And I also, I often think that a lot of players should go there from my brother. You know, um, but we we haven't had a, a number of players who um, wanted to attend. But yeah, I thank you for the story. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really. I I remember playing there. I don't remember that experience, but I remember talking to Coach Valvano, mm -hmm. and uh, and the other guy was uh, Dick Vitale. Now you you know you know a crazy Dick. You know, Dick Vitale. He's like ah, he's. He was screaming and yelling. My mother said, "No, you're not going. Definitely not going with that guy." Because <laughs> <laughs> he, he he when he was recruiting, he had a few choice words. You know, my mother said, he, "He cursed a whole lot." You know, I was like, I was like, "Yeah, they, you know, they, he's fiery." You know, uh, but I wasn't going with uh, Coach uh, uh, Dick Vitale. But uh, both great guys, though. Now, as you notice, we uh, we awareness of you know um, breast cancer awareness, but. Uh, Jimmy V Foundation, Jimmy Valvano Foundation, because uh, Coach Valvano died of cancer, mm -hmm. and then now um, Dick Vitale um, just had his bout with cancer, and I got an opportunity to go to Garden last year and to go down to the floor and see uh, Coach uh, Dick Vitale. So, two great men, two great coaches. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, man, that's an awesome experience. Uh, you know, uh, story talking about that. That's that's I didn't know. You know, and then you, <laughs> and then and then you mentioned um, like the Bahamas, and you know, uh, I guess a lot of times when you grow up, you think like, hey, most of us have come from the South, right? And the longer I was in Mount Vernon, um, people who look like us, black and brown people, look like us, they were coming. You know, not just from the South, but they were coming from England and Africa. And and I remember Mr. Jim Tewitt, right? He was from um, uh, the Virgin U.S. Virgin Islands, and he was the he was the uh, director of the Boys Club. Mm. You know, and he was from a different island as well. And and that's when you started. You know, when you go different places now, like I, I've been to uh, Puerto Rico and all these Virgin Islands, and they knew these people. I mean, you know, growing up. Uh, so, yeah, awesome. You know, so tell us a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit more. Again, um, when I was in high school, um, I did follow sports. I followed the wrestling team. Okay. Um, and we had some amazing wrestling players back in high school. I did. I also went to all the basketball games. I I, I want you to know. So I remember you <laughs> playing, uh, Sam, um, Ray. I remember all you guys playing. But I also supported the wrestling team. And um, in 1975, Tony Crawford. You might remember him. He won what? the 1975 um, New York State Championship. 
and Horace Moore, Horace, you remember Horace Perry? Yes. Um, he, while he didn't win the championship, he came pretty darn close. And we, we had an amazing wrestling team back then. Oh, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. track and field. Yes. Wrestling. Mm -hmm. and, and Tony also, Tony was one of my best friends. Right. Right. Um, when I first started playing basketball for the boys club on the north side, Tony was, uh, when I joined the, the Sonics on the north side, Tony Crawford and Ralph Burtz were the captains of the team. I think we were 12 years old or something like that. They were, the, or at least I was 12, but uh, they were the captains of the team and they were tough, you know, and Tony was an amazing and Horace and all of them were amazing wrestlers, football players. I mean, they, and we, in 1976, we were all, um, scholastic all americans i mean we we, we were all um Edison award winners uh so what that meant that we were both not only athletes but we were students as well right yeah yeah so yeah keep on keep on going you you stirring <laughs> keep, me up here <laughs> i'm stirring you up yeah uh, i'm reminding you of yesteryears oh yeah and yeah. and mount vernon city school district and yes. um you know for me, it's like deja vu when 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 you grow up in a school system and then you have the uh, the honor to work in that system. It's a beautiful thing. Mount Vernon is the only place that I want to work. I I you know when I look at some of those children, Lowe's, I could see their parents. You know, Mount Vernon used to be Peyton Place, and we all knew each other. And now, um, though I see the um people that I grew up with, their children, grandchildren come into the system. So, you know, I really want us to do everything we possibly can for our student population. Yeah, and, and you're hitting on a, uh, something that's important too, because I think um, when I first came back uh, to the Boys and Girls Club, uh, that was the first thing I felt uh, was that I remember Mom Vernon right because mm -hmm. before you can move forward i believe you have to go back absolutely right and if you can't remember a time and i guess our time you know as student as students here at mount vernon you know as community members of mount vernon we remember a time i mean i mean i'm i'm literally every week on the phone with an alumni I mean, whether we're in a Bible study, where we're having a conversation about a group or organization, you know, talk to Walter Kirkland all the time, you know, Val Jean Garrett, you know, mm -hmm. Peter Shirell, oh, you know, yeah. David Belton. I mean, we talk all we talk all the time. And I think when we're on the call with other people from other places, I think they just get tired of us talking about Mount Vernon, right? They, they get, oh, come on, not another Mount Vernon story, not another <laughs> Mount Vernon person. Yeah, but that's the kind of, I think when I came back, I remembered that about Mount Vernon and I remembered it about the club, right? And so I wanted to take us back to bring us forward. And I, I get the feeling like, yeah, you remember when, Cause you know, cause may, may, sometimes people look at now and say, oh man, this ain't, this has never been good. Right. But there, there've been a lot of times when it's all been good. Right. Is it, you know, it wasn't perfect, but it was good. Right? It was great. Yeah. The yeah. demographics was different as you know, but my siblings and I, we went to school. We had a great time in Mount Vernon. Um, I have a sister, Donna Smith. I have a sister, Tracy Pierce. They they went through this school system. So too did my older brother. Um, ironically, today is his birth would be his birthday. So it's happy birthday to my brother Galen. Um, mm -hmm. He's in heaven now. But we went to Mount Vernon City School District, and we thought that we got a real good education. I have to say this. I remember when I was going to Iona. You know, we're all fearful that we might not. Um, be able to live up to expectation 
I thought at the time that it was a Catholic school and I wasn't sure that I was adequately compared. But once I got there, I realized that my education in Mount Vernon could stand up against anyone, anywhere. And um, I was able to be successful based on the education that I received here uh, in Mount Vernon. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, I, I know you got to be as excited as I was coming back. And now you, you know, acting superintendent, right? That means you're the head honcho. I mean, you know, you know, this is like when I became the executive director, I was the executive director. So, <laughs> you know, I had some authority. I had some power to put some things in place. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and because I knew what the history was, right. I knew that we could get back there. Right. Absolutely. And, yeah. Absolutely. And so, so, um, talk a little bit about like, well, first of all, um, did you know, I mean, when they were looking for, you know, a person to take over as superintendent, acting superintendent, um, you know, did you know they were considering you? And Absolutely not. Um, I usually tell people that, um, and I've told this story before, that 10 years ago, I would have never thought that I could be the acting superintendent, but my girlfriend reminds me that even a year ago, she used to say six months, but we're we're approaching that period now. She used to tell me six months before I would have never thought that I would be in this position today. Um, sometimes it's when um, preparation and opportunity meet. So I had been in the district since 2001. I started out as a coordinator of special ed, but they changed the name to a supervisor of special ed. And I had been acting director of special ed, an acting director of PPS. And, um, you know, years ago, of course, I really tried my endeavors, endeavor best to move up. And it took many years, but it finally happened for me in 2019 when I became the associate superintendent of student services and guidance. And then um, two years later, I became the assistant superintendent of PPS. So I understood where the bones were buried. And because of that, um, when I was asked to step in, I was able to provide guidance and there, it seemed seamless. It was a smooth transition because I was there and um, for such a long time in the cabinet meetings, under, I understood what was going on. And for the most part, I, I felt I feel honored that I had mm. surrounded myself with very capable people. There were some already in place and some I brought and they're doing a phenomenal job because you know it takes all of us. So no, I didn't know, but I'm I feel like I'm an acting superintendent and as long as I'm in this position, I'm owning it. For our students, I think that I'm here I'm 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 afforded this opportunity to make a difference to our children. And that's what I plan on doing. Yeah. I, I want to go back. I, I was reading something in the, uh, the, uh, uh, was it the, uh, the personnel part, the pupil personnel services. Right. And mm -hmm. it, that wasn't the only thing. I mean, you, you, were, you were doing that, but, uh, you were in charge of, let me see here. Chart overseeing student services, student special ed, homebound services, homeschooling, charter schools, out of the district programs. I mean, you were responsible for uh, attendance, enroll student enrollment. I mean, come on, code of yeah. conduct process. I mean, how do you? I mean, come on. I mean. Yes, you you know you you did that hand motions, and that's sometimes what I thought that I was juggling balls, and I just hope I didn't drop one, you know. Um, so I felt that being in Mount Vernon helped prepare me for that. And like I said, then it takes um, we have excellent principals, we have excellent. Um, I have an excellent cabinet. I have Dr. Jamal Doggett. I have Dr. Uh, Beverly Jones. Um, I have Dr. Gabaton. We have new individuals that came aboard, Mark Ramundi, Noel Campbell. Um, we have a tremendous team. 
we, in our business department, we do have Ken Silva, and we now have a new in-house attorney. His name is Royce Russell. Um, and, and, you know, we are putting some things together and we're pretty excited about it. Yeah. Um, as you, as you know, uh, our theme this year is back to basics and, um, we're focusing on reading, arithmetic and writing. Um, and we're trying to make learning fun. Um, that's very important to me at a recent principals meeting. One of the things that I really stressed is affording students the opportunity to be successful. You know, oftentimes we have students that, um, you know, they might only get a 64. I want, you know, I, I was, Ken Silver mentioned to me that years ago in New York City, they had something called Circle 65. And I really like that concept. If you got between 62 and 65, you could pass. Um, Rebecca Jones mentioned to us in New Rochelle, her daughter has the opportunity to retake tests or do test correction. I, I believe that if, if students are willing to work towards improvement, they should have the opportunity to make up, to make up work, to retake tests. Um, and we have to do everything we can so that our students can be successful. And that's very important to me. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that I think the the bottom line is right. You you got a 64, 65. The bottom line is that uh, you want to know the rest of it, right? I mean, it, if it's a hundred percent, I get an A or a hundred, and I get sixty five of it. You know that percentage, right? Okay. Well, I need to learn the rest of it. Not okay. Now I don't know it, and it's over. Right. And you just fail somebody. I, I mean, and I, I get it. Some people say, well, you can't, we'd be here all day or all year. Or how many years is it? Yeah. But I, I do believe that I, I'll, the young people today are so much smarter. I'm not going to say smarter than I'm not going to put a, uh, you know, I'm on whether they're smarter than the past. Somebody always say, who's a better player, the past or the present. Right. I'm not, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to look at it that way. Who's better back then, or we were better back then. No. I believe that the, the kids with where they are now, and, and and I seen I seen it at the boys and girls club. I seen it every single day, right? With the way they handle uh, technology, phones, iPads, computers, right? With the way, man, their mind works, their intellect works. I believe that each and every one of these kids can be successful, right? uh if given given the opportunity and that's why you know i, I want to know a little bit more about now i haven't heard arithmetic in a long time so you, <laughs> you know it's math, math. I, heard, I heard arithmetic i said yeah i remember that right yeah uh, and yes. then it went from arithmetic to we didn't call it math uh, yes you know, yeah yeah so um but talk about that um how do you go how do you go how do you go back to the basics and how do you still move forward, you know, so, in, in, in keeping the pace? So back to basics in my mind means keeping things simple. It means when I take a look at, for example, how I learned how to read, I learned how to read through a, a variety of approaches. Phonics was major, um, but don't you remember the book, See Dick Run? Uh, you remember? Oh, yes. We did, we did whole language, we did, phonics we um but you know what we learned that the only way to really learn how to read is to read mm -hmm. and so we were encouraged to do so um i also believe that um back to basics to me means making it interesting um you when you think about it i remember as a kid i remember i started my early childhood um in the bahamas we used to use stones as kept to count and we used to take these stones and and you know if if we had 10 um 10 plus 10 we would get 10 stones and get 10 more and that, count them all up you know um things things are a little different but it's basically the same we everything we know about education it's no, it's really nothing new we introduce a whole lot of things but i want to keep it simple 
Um, you know, and, and what does that look like? We want, like I said, comprehension. We want students to be able to write. We want students to be able to, to read. And, and you know what? We know that teaching and learning is the meat and potatoes of our district. We know that our educational structure and leadership, we have um, the teachers. And um, I talk about, I had um, our administrators read um, Jim Collins's book, Good to Great. And I believe mm -hmm. that it's imperative that we get the right people on the bus. Um, and I also, like um, Jim Collins, I believe that good is the enemy of great. If you settle for mediocrity, you you won't ever think about becoming great. And I believe that um, we, we have to make sure that we have our students actively involved in the classrooms. And, and I also believe, and especially since I have a special ed background, that we have to um, understand that the students learn differently. I'm a visual learner, so I have to read things and, and see things for myself. I'm not as good as listening and audio. I have to, I'm a visual learner, so we all have to know how students learn. Um, and, and that becomes very important. So again, keep it simple. We know we know what we know everything that we need to know about a student's ability to read. Let's give them what they need. Um, we also know that students have to be able to write. Writing and reading go hand in hand. Um, that's where the comprehension comes in. In terms of the math, you know, it's unfortunate because I was one of those students that was always afraid of math, um, math and science for that matter. But it depends on who's teaching. Um, Dr. Jones did a wonderful presentation at one of our board uh, meetings, and she told us to pay attention. You have to pay attention to what's going on. And she made it very interesting. I would like to see in classrooms math jeopardy. I would like to see, um, you know, fun things that get students engaged. Very, I, I would like to see people be very creative. And um, this way, students aren't bored, students want to come to class. And that's important. Attendance is very important. Yeah. And, and um, you touched on some things because uh, I think you heard me mention about meeting with my counselor and pulling my file and knowing where I, where I was at at the time you know, reading that my reading levels in terms of reading at grade level seven and, and being in the ninth grade about to go uh, to the 10th grade. And one of the things when, when I spent my homeroom and my lunch period in a remedial study room in a, in front of a first time seeing, kind of seeing a computer right in front of me doing those lunch periods and the study halls. And as I started to do uh phonetical phonetic sounds phonics and phonetics mm -hmm. and i started to sound out words and then i started to understand those words the more confidence I, I i became and a lot of times i found with me i was afraid of education you know i was it was a fear of learning right it was a fear of i don't know what that is and 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 then you know how long it would take me to comprehend what was happening, what was being said. And a lot of it, once I got past the fear, right, of not being a good student, that I could be a good student, and then I start to achieve, right, the more confidence, right, I got. And, and so when I'm training in basketball, one of the first signs I put up in the gym is no fear. Mm-hmm right because fear is an enemy <laughs> you know and and i always say faith and fear both attract right you know fear attracts the negative and faith attracts the positive i mean it's like a snowball man i mean in sports you make a turnover right and then next thing you know you make another turnover and it just snowballs so when you don't have success in the classroom, it snowballs. Fear sets in and you just can't get it together. 
but teaching students that they can be successful is very powerful. And I think that's what I heard you saying, you know, how important it is for us to get to know the kids, learning styles, becoming creative, helping kids become comfortable with learning so that they can move forward. Um, yeah. And I, I think that, I think that's, um, that's powerful, you know, and I do appreciate it. When I heard you say back to basics, right? Cause you know, nobody wants to go back to basics because you know, nobody wants to go back to fundamental. Nobody wants fundamentals no more. They just want to start like, I'm going to give it to you. You got to either get it or don't get it. I mean, you know, they're going to give you something right in the middle. Right. And, and it's crazy because I've been at, I was at the boys and girls club 27 years. Right. And kids will come in to do after school, uh, programs, education. And sometimes I, of course I had to work up there and a lot of kids, number one, they, they couldn't read the instructions. Right. And then they didn't understand the instruction. So you're spending countless time trying to get them to understand. Right. And I, I was saying that one of the most important things, if kids can learn to read. Right. And I try to go back with parents to say, Hey, we, we're not Tuesday and Thursday when we're not going to do, they're not going to do homework here. Right. I, it was a proposal, right? Monday, uh, Monday and, and Wednesday, they do homework. Tuesday and Thursday, we do skill stuff. We build confidence. You know, we we talk about phonetical sounds, teach them how to read. And you know, parents didn't want that. They just wanted their homework to get done, mm -hmm. right? And and so that's the tough part. So when you say going back to basics, but yet you still want to accelerate, right? Because the thing that happened to me once once I was in that remedial program, I accelerated, right? Cause the more, more I got overcame fear, I accelerated, you know, and, and I became a very good student, you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I love it. I, I love it. I, I, what does everybody else think about it? I mean, what, you know, cause one of the things you, you know, when I came back to the boys and girls club and I, cause you're, you're the acting superintendent. So you give vision. Right. And everybody's looking at you. Okay. Well, what you going to do? Right. What's the plan? What's the plan? <laughs> you know, what's going to go on here. Right. <laughs> and then you, and then all of a sudden you, you turn around, not, not only you got to worry about the board. Right. But now you got to worry about is the board going to accept, is the board want to go this way? Does the staff, you know, I'm dealing with people that were here before and just, maybe they just settled in. It, you know, I'm just going to get my paycheck. I mean, you know, and then you got other people like, I don't know. So what was it like, you know, when you delivered the message, we're going back to basics. I have to admit, everyone was truly, truly supportive. Um, I presented it first um, at an administrative retreat in June. And the, uh, um, when I tell you, we were all singing the same tune and on the same page. Um, people wrapped their head around it. We had conversations and discussions in terms of what that looked like. And and basically, I, I, I felt nothing but love and support. Um, you know, one of the board members even said to me, yeah, you know, I had my doubts, but they were really happy with going back to basics. That made sense to them. And, and so what I'm saying, I felt very, very supported. And, you know, that's how we were able to, you know, we came up with a film um, and, um, uh, for opening day. And that film was everyone really getting on the bus and getting on the bus was saying, we're here, um, we're supporting you and we're going back to basics. And they spoke in terms of just what, what that meant to them. Um, and so, it's not, you know, like it, to me, it's just not words. It's not just themes. We meet it from the heart and we know how important it is. And we don't want to leave any student behind. All of us, all of the students, we want to be able to in, help them improve and be better than they were the year before. And I, so I think that when people buy into 
um, what their leader is suggesting or recommending, that's a great thing. You get so much more accomplished rather than fighting those battles. I didn't have those battles. I had um, supportive um, administrators and they were able to present that to their staff when they returned to their building. So I was very fortunate in, in that regard. Um, the cabinet, the senior cabinet, the junior cabinet, they've really been working vigorously in terms of finding ways in which to help students grow, develop, improve. And that's what we're working on right now. Yeah, no, 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 that's important. I mean, this first was important to me, you know, as an alumnus of the, of the district, you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's important to me how, uh, you know, because we remember, I mean, both of us remember, my wife remember, we all remember, you know, growing up in Mount Vernon and going to school uh, and, and none of, we weren't perfect. I mean, you know, walking home from school or getting on the bus from school, it wasn't perfect. Right. But it was good. Right. Uh, and, and, and so, you know, for those who are alumnus, man, like always when I'm on the phone with somebody, how's my Vernon? Right. Because they've heard something, right. Mm -hmm. They've heard something that happened in the city, something that happened in the school district district, but yet they had a different experience. Right. And it's, it's always good to be able to get on the phone and say, look, Hey, you know, the school district has taken this approach. You remember this approach, right? We all mm -hmm. were, we all started with the basics, right? That that was the foundation. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm really excited, uh, you know, um, in the direction um, that it was, it it's going in. Um, I I can't be more happy or proud, uh, cause and you you singing my song when you when you talk about when you talk about reading. Right. And you, you talk about comprehension, mm -hmm. right? I, I mean, my father, law you know, man, may he, he rest in peace, man, as an educator for so many years and an assistant principal. I mean, he, he was big on skill development. I mean, you know, for, for young people, for adult, I mean, he taught the mastery of reading and writing at Mercy College. Um, he taught my my son and my nephew, my sons and my nephews, you know, all those basic principles of that. Uh, I mean, and we we all seen the results of it. When Absolutely. You, when you have foundation, when you got the basics down pack and you got the foundation, man, you can move forward. If you don't have that foundation, you you can't move forward. And, and let me say this. It was so much needed because I was wondering what was this, what was the remnant for dealing with the pandemic? Cause see, wherever we we were before the pandemic, which was tough, then we went into a pandemic, right? And then now we we online, right? There's no, you know, we're not getting together, and they're not getting together with their peers. You know, it could set academically it could set you back and and you i mean people don't really want to do anything after the pandemic right so now getting kids back in school right getting you know getting on the bus right and getting everybody on the bus you know and get and going in the, in the same direction and i read that book uh in regards getting the people getting the right people on the bus and the right seat on the bus Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. And, uh, you know, very powerful from good to great, man, you, you talking to me now, you, you know, <laughs> great book. And, so, you know, like you just said, it's, it's being on the bus, but sometimes you do have to sit in different seats and all of that is important. Um, and, and, you know, in terms of a, a, a cabinet, many of us, we're a young cabinet. But you know, sometimes with young, you young, being young in your job is a lot of enthusiasm and, and everyone wants the same thing. But back to reading, you know, and I know that reading is the nucleus. It's imperative that we get students to read. But you also talked about um, the pandemic. And yes, there's been some slide. 
um, our students had a difficult time. I would be remiss if I didn't say that. Our, our students had to deal with losing family members. And um, so, yes, we have to deal with where our children are and we have to deal with mental health. And believe it or not, a lot of organizations have come to in support of us. Um, in turn, we have WJCS, they provided to social workers. We have Department of um, Social Services, they have providing um, a, a social worker to us. We have hospitals. Um, of course, you know, Rock Rockland Psychiatric has been there with us for some time now. But we also have um, Montefiore Hospital. They're, uh, they're, we're, they're uh, also lending some folks to us because we know how important, um, um, or we know the impact of the pandemic and how it's affected our students. And so we have, we can't, we can't forget that as well. You know, um, we're working on that. But I, I do have to say that we are pretty excited though. We implemented our after school program and it started on October 16th. Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, it's, it's in all of our schools. And so we don't just have power hour, we now have some clubs as well. Um, you know, what does that, what does that mean to us? We, we have to focus on the academics, but we want to focus on other interests as well. It could be playing basketball at some schools, playing chess, debate teams, clubs. We, we, we allowed um, principals to have some flexibility based on the needs in their specific buildings. But I'm so excited. Um, President Kerwin, oh boy, she really wanted to have these after school programs. And all of our other board members, Wanda White, Adrian Saunders, Sabina Kelly, they've all wanted us to have this. And basically, we're, we're putting those into place. We're putting uh, the programming in place. And then we also are thinking about um, offering something in the AM for parents as well. So we're trying to meet the needs of our community, uh, uh, our students, our parents, our community at large. So we have a lot really going on. We have other agencies that's help um, Iona, we mentioned Iona, um, they, they're involved. We have Con Ed that's involved. They're, they're bringing robotics to our schools. So we, we're forming many, many, many partnerships. Um, and, and I'm really excited about that as well. Um, you know, I think that one of the things that happened, um, we have a great board, uh, we're working together and they're very encouraging uh, about forging these partnerships. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm really excited about that because people want to join with us and work with our students and right. they're off affording them many opportunities as well. Yeah. And, and, you know, being a, uh, you know, uh, director of the boys and girls club for many years, uh, of course we, we, one of the things we specialize in was either, uh, yeah, after school program or evening programs with teens or summer programs. Uh, and, and we had national boys and girls club had created uh, for many years. And of course I know it well created the power hour. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and so, you know, some, you know, I, at first, not, not really at first, but at first you hear, he said, Oh, power hour. I remember yeah, boys and girls club does power hour. Right. And, and, uh, and then when you think about it, right, I, I think it's what, how many kids? 10,000 kids. I mean, uh, none of us can serve all those kids after school or even even the evening, e in the evening. We can't serve all those kids. We need, we need every school open after school. We need every boys and girls club, right? Um, producing great programs. Uh, one thing I remember, because I was a part of the power I was a little kid, and uh, one of the things I remember about Power Hour, the program, it was an academic study, you know, get your homework done, mm -hmm. right? But most importantly, becoming self-sufficient learners. I mean, when you start after school programs or 
people are not self-sufficient learners right away, right? You have to teach people to be self-sufficient, right? And and so when people say power hour, right? I was like, power hour, you know, some of our kids never get to the where they could do their homework in an hour, mm-hmm. right? Where they can sit down, do their homework, get everything done in an hour, that's impossible, right? But, but I, I noticed over time, as you teach kids to be self-sufficient, right? How to open up, how to get their book bag out, get their homework on the table, go work through one subject from another, right? Get that homework done in the in, in an hour or hour and a half time, right? Now they gotta be pretty proficient, right? So you gotta teach students to be proficient and self-sufficient, right? Cause they don't walk, they don't walk in your, they don't walk in your after school program and they, they self-sufficient. I mean, that just, just doesn't happen, you know, but I mean, the thing is, I understand that every, every kid needed a boys and girls club. Every, every kid needs an after school program, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and they need creativity. Right. And so I like that when you say creativity and they're different forms of learning. I mean, people will learn through basketball, you know, um, people will learn through dance. I mean, Mm -hmm. they will learn character integrity mm-hmm. you know through through those things so yeah i mean you need to and they need to be in 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 constructive places right i mean the the most difficult time for a child is between three and six right and and so if they don't have something constructive to do and you're giving them something constructive to do between three and six right and then the other most important part of that is okay they there but who's in that seat because who's 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 now who's now dealing with them communicating mm-hmm. with them uh because mm-hmm. that becomes important human resource right we're not talking about money but we're talking about human resources right at one time we you you can attest to this going to the bus after school Bavern high school right and seeing while you're getting on the bus or walking home, the parking lot is full. You know why? Because teachers are inside, right? Asking students if they need help, right? And so when when teachers begin to think there's hopelessness, right? You go to the parking lot when kids are getting out of school and the teachers have left before the kids get out of school, right? Mm-hmm. Nobody's helping any, any anybody. So, uh, you know, that's what I felt as a kid growing up in the Mount Vernon school district that Miss Walters and, and a number of those teachers were there. I mean, they were asking, did you need extra help? So yeah, I mean, after school is, yeah, that's, I, I say that I, you know, I'm applaud you on, on after school programs and all the things I got a chance to look at a lot of things. We're going to pop up some pictures here. I got a, a lot of things you guys have been doing. I mean, we've I been what, doing, we have been doing a lot. So we we got some pictures here. You you guys, uh, I mean, if you've seen something that stands out, you've been dealing with safety. Because I'm a yeah. I'm a believer. I always say at the Boys and Girls Club because you mentioned the word fun, right? If there's no safety, if there's no security, there is no fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So you 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 know freshman conduct. I mean, you've been doing all these things with the freshmen. Um, you know, Hispanic Month. I mean. I mean, look at, look at, I, I was just looking at all the dads, you bring, you're bringing the dads there, you know, the dads are doing their thing. Uh, cause you gotta get, yeah, mothers, we already know mothers, right? We, we just, moms are there, right? But when you see dads there too, that says a lot, that says a lot about it, you know? And, uh, yeah, so we, we threw some in the homecoming. Yeah. I remember those back in the day. Oh um, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Man, I remember <laughs> Memorial Field was packed doing a uh, homecoming yeah so you know bullying prevention right yeah so you'll keep talking while you see these pictures man i mean oh yes yeah um, talk, talk about some of the things so we had unity day the other day and everyone showed up in orange um basically we want to prevent this bullying that happens sometimes in our school and um, so we have no place for hate um Dr. Dorgett is leading that charge. As you can see, he's in the picture. 
Mm -hmm. And um, so one day we all wore blue to um, to support and prevent bullying. And another day everyone wore orange to to really um, foster unity. So we have a whole lot going on. And you talked about safety. That's really near and dear to my heart as well. Um, you might be aware that we're in partnership with um, the city of Mount Vernon, and we're going to have SROs in our our schools, um, the a safety officer, so police officers, we're going to have them come in. And that's supposed to start next month. So we do have, um, we've been having that conversation. Um, that picture that you just saw was a partnership that we had um, with, with City Hall. As you could see, they had a, a, an a organization come in and we all brainstormed in terms of how we, we from a district's perspective, how our students could be safe, but of course, from a city's perspective, people being safe. So we really, really had, um, uh, that was a very good meeting that we held. Of course, you know, you can't have enough meetings, but we do meet on a monthly basis with City Hall. Um, Deputy Commissioner Lockhart is leading the charge in terms of that, and we have our safety um, team they're a part of that. Um, we meet with the fire department, the police department, and we all come together in terms of think, talking about safety. Um, in terms of all our activities, you see so much is going on, and I can't take credit for that. Everyone works so hard um, in the building. You know, one of the first pictures you showed, Lincoln, and, and, and they with focused in on breast cancer. Um, you saw in, in a recently, yeah, there goes that picture. Um, that's Rebecca Jones and that's at Lincoln. So they're all wearing pink and they really focused on breast cancer awareness month. Um, so we're doing a lot of things. And um, again, we want students to improve. We, we really do. Our graduation rate this past year was like, it was 74%. It, it took a slight dip. There was one thing that um, happened with the pandemic. Um, students got exempt from taking regents exam. We're back to taking regents exams. Mm. So with that said, we really have to work on students doing better. We're creating pathways. Sometimes students get aren't able to pass certain regions. So regions exam. So we have to create pathways. So again, students could be successful. Yeah, no, I love it, man. I mean, I see you had uh, Mr. Dame Dash, Dash there. was that. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. And see, that's one of the things when I when I think in terms of learning, you take, for example, at our Denzel Washington School for the Arts, um, you there's sometimes students need a hook. Those young, bright, talented individuals, they work in terms of um, perfecting their creativity. And if that's what it takes for them to be successful in school, so be it. I applaud them with that because we have some very talented um, individuals. Um, last week, one of the PTA, um, um, I think it was the vice president over at Pennington. They're trying to bring in what they call a sand, sandbox, and they're going to have 10 sessions where students, they want to bring in a program on Friday afternoon where students will um, put on a play, prepare for putting on a play. That's so exciting. Um, so sometimes you want to, your hook could be sports. It could be um, performances. It could students might really want to play the violin. And that's a program that's um, being or has been at Lincoln as well. Um, we, we have all these collaborations and we want to really find out what students are interested in. Because, you know, when you horn into um, students' interests, that sometimes help students become better academically as well. Well, yeah, that that that's that's what worked for me you know mm -hmm. when 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 a person i had no interest uh you know in terms of school mm -hmm. um so playing basketball i found a niche right or something that i really like to do and i thought that i could 
find a way around education so that I could do it. Right. Once I realized that and only way for me to do what I, what I was dreaming about doing was I needed to get educated. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I will never forget uh, being in the seventh grade and I was over at uh, Nichols. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I think it was eighth grade. And uh, the uh, high school coach was Mr. Sly Rose Deitcher was the gym teacher and Earl Tatum was being recruited. Mm. And and uh, uh, the coach from Marquette, uh, um, his name slips me right now, but a uh, famous coach came and he was recruiting Earl. He came to talk to the coach at the at the middle school and he was talking to uh, the coach and we were playing in the gym. We just playing around in the gym and he he seen must have spotted me playing. Right. And, you know, he asked coach if he could speak to me. Right. And uh, he introduced himself to me. He said, hey, man, you're very talented. Right. And uh, he said, I'm recruiting. I'm recruiting Earl Tatum uh, to go to Marquette. Al McGuire. Yeah. I don't know why Al McGuire would slip my mind, but Al McGuire was there. And he said, I'm recruiting Earl to go to uh, the University of Marquette. And if you do now, listen to these words, he said, if you do good in school right and you work hard on the court i'm gonna come back and recruit you right and then up to that point i'm in middle school you know i'm still learning the vehicle the process by which i could play the game or that i could get to the knicks right and so finding that niche art because i knew if i couldn't if i couldn't play ball you know, I was a pretty good artist. So I knew mm. that one of the things that I could do is that I could do animation. I mm-hmm. mean, I, I knew I could do those things like that. So I knew I could do art, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, um, you know, so they, so when kids find a niche, right? Like the Denzel Washington School, every kid there is finding a niche. I mean, the kid at the STEAM, you know, at the STEAM, the stream academy, steam academy, steam right? Academy, yes. steam, at the steam academy, you, one of those things that's, that's your niche, you know, your ability to write your, you know, your ability to sing, your ability to dance. Once I find that, you know, you're using that as an instrument or a tool to help you become successful as a student. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is so important. You know, you spoke about steam. We have students that want to be engineer. Um, they're even talking about um, artificial intelligence. I know that used to scare me. Can you imagine <laughs> that robots will take over at some point in, in many of our in many fields? But but you know you really have to be able to give students exposure because it may not be in our time, although it's here now. But you want to prepare your, uh, we want to prepare our students for careers of tomorrow. And that becomes very important. So I love that we have, we have, we have high schools. So we have um, the STEAM that's really into the sciences and the math. We have um, Denzel Washington School for the Arts that's really into the arts. We have Mount Vernon High High School that has the IB program. Um, and I really, let me just tell you, we were going to transfer one of the IB teachers this year and those students would, they were so articulate, articulate, they advocated for their teacher and they spoke so highly of that program and what it meant to them in their future. And, you know, we also have the Rebecca Turner Academy now, Mm. um, the record Rebecca Turner, cause we're not leaving any student behind. We know that this with this program, and you know, many students st- struggle academically, and they they need more hands-on, one-to-one. They need caring teachers, and I tell you, Rebecca Turner Academy really have very very care caring teachers. All our all our buildings do. Um, you know, when you think in terms of the dem- our demographics and the things that our students go to and us us teachers come to work every day to work with kids that struggling academically and many of them 
you know, you'll be surprised what they have to go to even before they come to school. So I applaud them. I'm very supportive of, of our, our teaching staff, our administrative staff. I think that um, we really got off to a wonderful start. Don't get me wrong, like anything else, we have some blemishing, blemishes here and there, but we're really trying to move forward. I, I have to tell you, this Friday, we're even taking a trip up to um, several um, board members and cabinet members and I, we're taking a trip up to Newburgh. They have a system in which um, Adrian saw, Sonda saw on TV in which, and I don't, I can't say um, that we're implementing anything in our district, but we're taking a look-see. They have these pouches where they, um, it's a school of a, a population of about 140 students. And what they do is they have these pouches in which they, they take um, cell phones. And they said that the, all that social media and those outs, external issues has, that it's just decreased within their building. So we want to see um, what that looks like. And we're taking a trip up to Newburgh on Friday. Right. So that, that means that they would uh, hand in their cell phones as, as they go, as they go in. That's, that's nothing new. Um, we've no. tried that here. Um, I think, um, um, Ralph Burtz um, implemented that some years um, at Mandela. Um, it's something that we have to take a look see. Some of our difficulties can occur with students and their cell phones. So um, mm -hmm. we're looking and, and, and we want our students to be successful. Yeah, I, I would say this in terms of uh, social media. Right. And it's something that we were looking at at the Boys and Girls Club, too, as well. And also, we we were we were uh, looking at it, you know, from some family members, my, my nieces, and nephews, you know, because we we'd come we have Christmas at my house. Right. Mm -hmm. So they, everybody used to come here, you know, I can be 20, 30 people there. And whereas we didn't have cell phones growing up, we had no social media. So you sitting in there with the old folks and you sitting around, everybody's talking, they laughing, talking about old times, giving old stories, right? You didn't have much choice. I mean, it's cold outside. I mean, you know, <laughs> you, know you didn't have much choice, but to kind of listen, you know, be bored and listen, right? But we've seen over the years where they were just on their cell phones. So they're not really paying any attention. They there, but they, they, they just using their cell phone. And the question is, learning how to use a cell phone i mean because it's a computer right in the palm of your hands mm -hmm. right and you can use it to be destructive or you can use that tool to be successful and how absolutely. to absolutely yeah. mm -hmm. like you could i mean the thing is you you could be looking up stuff for your homework i mean you know everything is in your phone right i mean it's right there in front of you but to learn to use social media, you know, effectively, that, you know, so that it would impact everyday life, you know, setting up your schedule every day. I mean, you know, getting to school, waking you up, getting to school on time. I mean, you know, all those kind of things are important. And uh, social media, you should be looking at things that are constructive on social media. Right? Absolutely. That's, that's going to help you move, take your niche to the next level. You know, so yeah, I mean that that's a challenge all by itself. Because <laughs> especially if you see a kid with it in elementary school, I mean, you know, like, hey, but um, no. As, as we come to a uh, uh, close, I'm I'm excited. Um, I'm excited to, uh, you know, to have this conversation with you, um, and and to for me to to research, um, you know everything that's going on in the, in the school district. Not that happened before, right? I, I don't know if you know this now. I don't know who does it, but I'm a big code of conduct person. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, and 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 so I was always, I always wonder, and this is, maybe you can answer this for me, like in the code of conduct, which is probably about five or 600 pages. Uh, <laughs> And as I was going through the code of conduct, not now, but I mean, you know, a, a few years ago, um, well, the year during the pandemic, I was going through the code of conduct for the for the Marvin School District, 
and I knew that there was um I don't know, five four or five hundred things like if you do this you're gonna this is gonna happen if you do that that's gonna happen this you're gonna do this you know it was like five six hundred things about if you did this this would be the consequences right and then you get back to a few pages in the back you know but if you're good you know then then this will happen right i would love to see a lot more if if you do this this is the consequences i mean you know you're gonna this is gonna happen to you you're gonna be you're gonna have favor over here you're gonna benefits of this you know because we spend a lot of time on what happens when you get caught right and and talk to me a little bit about that because i i was i saw that a little lopsided you know in terms of you know it's easy to tell people you know they're not doing good but i mean to tell people because i think what happens when when and i should always say that i don't know what the percentages are now but back in the past when you look at i say uh 90 i'll say i'll just use 97 percent. 97 percent of the people are doing what you ask they're doing their very best right but three percent right are acting nuts they they're out of totally out of control but they get 97 97 percent of the attention that's exactly right yeah. i went to a superintendent's meeting for example and one of our former principals um mr gonzalez said to me kim you know all of us face the challenges that you face in Mount Vernon, but for whatever reason, the media just horns into Mount Vernon. They go through the same struggles, but you know what? We have a lot of positive things that go goes on and we have to continue to write and let everyone know what exactly is going on here in Mount Vernon. Um, and yes, like you said, it's that very small percentage that, uh, um, of students that act out, the very poor, small percentage of the um, students that we really have to focus on because we don't want to lose the, those students either. Those are our students and we have to pay close attention to them as well. But by and large, we have great students and students come to school despite whatever they're going that's going on with them at home. Um, and whatever challenges the parents may be may have, and they they come to school. For those students that that has difficulties coming to school, we now we brought back attendance teachers. They're working in our building um, to assist students with coming to school. But a part of it is to find out the root cause. What is going on with Johnny? That Johnny's not coming to school, and and so we're focused on that as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I don't know if there, I know there was a number of comments. You probably seen them at the bar, bottom yeah. of the screen. I don't know if there was any questions out there. Um, they're talking about having the drum line. Could we start? Yeah, a drum I see line? Mike Hammond is yeah. asking about the bands. <laughs> right, um, right. Mike, I believe you've been at the, um, at the K-8 level. I'm certain we have to take a survey and see where we stand with that. Uh, like I said, um, Rebecca Jones has taken a charge in terms of violins. Um, I know at the leadership program they have a, a they have a drum corp that's doing amazingly well. Um, certainly, if that's what we uh, w you know we should take a survey and find out where we are and who's interested. And if if students are interested in that, I'm all for it. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I mean, any 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 final uh comments um you know as you as you look over the next well here, here's a question for you when does it become or how does it become from where that acting uh disappears i mean you know and it becomes superintendent so you know i'm focused on not here and now and what i have to do and um the powers that be have to work that out i have really no idea um but i'm doing what i need to do lows as an acting superintendent okay <laughs> i hear you <laughs> yeah because you're gonna need somebody uh you know over the next what 
three to five years, somebody, mm -hmm. somebody steady, somebody got a vision, a plan, somebody has a strategic plan, it all working out, moving in that direction. And, and three to five years from now, I have a comp, I want to accomplish and I have accomplished what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. My graduation, graduation rate, the impact of uh, after school program, safety, security, and how much my kids are enjoying it. Cause I could honestly say, I, I know now there's a lot of places as I'm getting older, there's a lot of places I, I would love to go back to, mm -hmm. right? But before those things, I used to always say that if I, if there was a point in my life, I would go back to, I would go back to high school. Oh, high school is my thing as well. Yeah, I, I yeah. concur. Yeah. And so I there was, so. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot to, uh, now in my life, now that I'm living, right. Uh, things that I enjoy moments that I enjoy that I would go back to gladly. Right. But, um, that was one of my special times going back to high school was, was one of the uh, most amazing times in my life. Well, you know, Lord, Lord, since you like high school so much, I'm inviting you to come back to high school. You can come, <laughs> you can go back to high school. Um, we would love, we, we need students that need to be mentored. Um, we have activities that happen. So come on back. Um, you like high schools. We have several of those and you pick, pick your choice and you feel free. As a matter of fact, if you don't want to come into the high school, you have this podcast. We have students that would love to entertain you and answer questions to be a part of the of the Blueprint podcast. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I uh, you know, before we get off, I don't I I was wondering if my wife had anything to say, any comments. Uh, she's up here. Uh any questions that before we get off here. Uh you know, I don't know if she's hiding back there, but uh, <laughs> uh I wish Mara Brandon would bring back uh, the ROTC. Junior, R -O -T Junior ROTC. Yeah. Yes. Um, we've had some com conversations about that. Um, I have to follow up and see where we stand, but um, several people have, have made that request. Yeah, because I remember my niece, we, she was a part of the uh, um, the Junior what, ROTC. She was in mm -hmm. high school. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. I, uh, Ben was the question. Um, Dr. White, at Pen the principal at Pendleton, said a band is coming there. Um, Angela Hall at Denzel Washington is basically saying that they're going to have band night at Denzel Washington um, called the Monroe Classic, and that's going to be on October 26th. So there, apparently there are many students that's interested in oh, yeah. um, band, music in general. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Smith. It's been a pleasure to hear your interview today. Um, you know, as I thought about some of the challenges that um, you faced coming in, what was one of the biggest obstacles, um, or should I say biggest challenges that you faced coming in um, in this new role for yourself? What was one of the biggest, um, you know, hurdles or challenges that you had to face, and what did you do to, to address it? So I... Uh um, I guess with the elephant being in the room, you uh, um, I know by now people know that I came in um, uh, as the acting superintendent and I couldn't listen to the noise. I had to get right down to business and that's what I've been doing. So a challenge, um, the way I came in appeared to be divisive, but I think um, in all honesty, People have been supportive, and even those individuals who um, may not like what took place, um, I feel supported by them as well. Yeah, that's good. It's yeah. pretty awesome. I, I was um, I wanted to say again, thank you for the opportunity to come and and speak for the um, opening session. It was really um, a surprise to be asked, um, <laughs> but at the same time. Um, it really allowed me to kind of go down a little bit of memory lane um, based on the um, experiences that I had both as a student, um, as a parent of students, as well as a basketball coach. Uh, all those things 
um, impacted me in the Mount Vernon School District. And one of the things that I feel a lot of people miss out on the fact that so much greatness has come out of our city and out of our school district. People um, in the surrounding areas, they only hear sometimes about the negativity, but I love, you know, expounding upon um, the greatness that has come out of our city. It is just amazing. And for four square miles to have so much gift, Mm -hmm. and talent is just amazing to me so I'm grateful to be a part of that um you know coming out of Mount Vernon High School I'm very very proud um Mount Vernon Knight now I'm also part Yonkers um but I'm also a Mount Vernon Knight uh to to my heart's content so thank you for all you're doing to make Mount Vernon um putting us back on not only putting us on the bus but putting us on the map for good things. Yeah, we're on the bus. We're, we're all on the bus. <laughs> we're on the bus. <laughs> um, I, one, I passed by an office um, last week, and they had pictures of a school bus, several of them, and they said, finally on the bus. And yes, <laughs> we're finally on the bus. We're finally on the bus. S listen, some it. people have to walk on the bus. Some are dragged on the bus. Some are pushed on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> but they on the bus. They're on the bus. They're on the bus. <laughs> and all the alumni are on the bus. Yes. How about that? That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> That's yes. right. Yeah, Lowe's, I think I love the idea about maybe having some of the kids um, with yeah. the podcast. Lowe's and I did a live podcast uh, in September where we actually brought the podcast um, to the women's um, ABA. And it was pretty awesome. So who's to say that we can't do a live podcast right there on, uh, at the school and have right. some kids that, you know, or do something that's going on and do something right on right on site. It would be pretty awesome. Yes. Oh, See? I love having I love having And thank you, Angela that. Hall, for that. I appreciate yeah, thank it. Thank you, Angela. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think this is Yeah. Having young people on, they got creativity, they got ideas, man, they got energy. Yeah, um, you identify some, and we'll bring them on. Uh, you you think of something, a date or something like that, and uh, and we'll figure out how to bring the podcast right to right to that situation. Okay, and we'll, maybe we'll teach make some. It you might want to do something where we teach some of the kids how to run a podcast themselves. They could start one and do a a, a, a podcast, um, a, a weekly podcast that's done by the kids at the school. Mm, yeah. That would be amazing. See, those are the creative things that I really appreciate. You said a mouthful. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, I believe that you just volunteered your services. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we'll take it and run with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you never know these this is how kids could become successful newscasters you know we don't know what their next is going to be and so this would be a great opportunity i love the young man who does um isaiah who does the basketball games um mm -hmm. isaiah rose and yes. when he was in high school isaiah yes, I isaiah in high school. announced our basketball games um you know back then so you know it's really awesome to see what he's doing today so mm -hmm. these are the things you know maybe everybody doesn't have to be a basketball player you know people can be so many other things we just have to open up the doors of opportunity absolutely well, yeah and i think it's important um like at the denzel washington school it's not only that, you know, people get in front of the camera, man, it's the people behind the camera. Look, look, they went on a strike for writing. Right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, there was a writer's strike. I mean, you can't move forward without writers. Right. So, you know, a lot of times everybody want to get on the court. They want to get on the field. They want to be on the diamond. Right. But I, I used to take them to like net games or net games and stuff like that and introduce them to the people behind the scene and mm -hmm. think of, see all the other careers opportunities that they have you know the game outside the game i mean mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and uh that's important too you know, so uh yeah whatever one, we can one do. of your teachers called me 
Um, she was the French teacher. She was trying to get the kids to go to France. Um, I'm not sure oh, yes. what oh, yes. ever happened, but it was, you know, I, tr I told her to reach out to several different people, especially the pastors in the community, but I'm not sure how that went. But even if she didn't get it going this year, it is definitely something no, that you want to. Um, the board um, members made a decision to um, help them with their first down payment. They're doing some fundraising and our students will be going to that is that is pretty awesome and 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 so i told her that you know whatever you know whatever i could do to try to help but you know we need to get that information out as far as letting these kids you know go and see places there is a book uh written by um uh between the world and me and um uh Ta-Nehisi Coates and he talked about how, you know, he really wasn't good. His father worked in the library down at, um, at Howard, and he was always um, getting in trouble because he, whenever he got in trouble, his father would make him sit in the library. Mm. Um, and he didn't think it was important for him to learn France because he said, I'll never go to France. But at one point he went to France and he said, you know, I wish I had taken the opportunity to learn French because when I went there, I didn't really know kind of like what to do, you know? And so it's pretty awesome, you know, that these young people have an opportunity to go to France. Um, mm -hmm. I think my husband is over there frozen. I think you're frozen, <laughs> I think you're frozen too. Oh, we both frozen? <laughs> yeah, well, he's gone. I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so he's the one that froze. <laughs> um, and Dr. Hall or Angela Hall, you said you wanted me to come. Absolutely. Whenever we can work something out, I would definitely do what I can. So, And, and we're going to do whatever we can with the Blueprint Podcast, as Lowe said. We've been doing this for four years. When we started it years ago, um, we had other people doing it. I learned how to do all the background stuff, you know, and so sometimes you just learn to do what you have to do. So we just put it all together. We pull it all together and we make it work. And so I'm really proud of him the work that he does. So that's why next week I'll be hosting and he'll be the guest and I get to ask him all the questions that he asked uh, everyone else. And Deirdre, who was my sister, said it would be nice to see former students from different decades be interviewed by current students. Oh, oh that, that would be, be nice. really a good that thing. Um, you know, when I was coaching basketball at Mount Vernon High School, the one thing that I did do is I brought former players back to mentor the players that were there. And so each person had somebody that was a su successful businesswoman. And I told them that I didn't want them to be just win championships. I wanted them to be successful women. But it's because I mentored them with successful women. And so I think it's really important. I owe that to Erica, to Coach Erica, because I need to try to bring those women back together to help our young girls on the mm -hmm. basketball team now because that's what's really important. But we've taken up a lot of your time. I was waiting for so, Lowe's to get back on. Well, but I'm thank back. you for your time. Yeah. You're very welcome. Thank you so very much for having me. Thank I truly you. appreciate that. Uh, I, I truly appreciate this opportunity and I look for, forward to a partnership. And I'm going to hold you to it that the Blueprint <laughs> podcast is coming back to Mount Vernon City School District. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm committed. Yeah, I'm committed. Oh, they're going to present. I think that's. Oh, no. Oh. Look at that. Oh, where did you get that from? <laughs> I had to get that in there. Oh, my God. You look like a, you look like a movie star. <laughs> oh, that's cool right there. Yeah. 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 So, all right. I think we've uh, that's a board members there. You got board members. Yes. Yeah. No. Awesome, man. You, get, you got people working in administration. Awesome, man. So, all right. I guess I'm gonna shut down here again, Doctor Smith. Thank you so much, man. I've enjoyed the conversation, and I've also, uh, I also enjoy to see the direction that the Mount Vernon School District is going into. So, again, thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate no, it. No problem. And to each and every one of you who support the Blueprint Podcast and those who came on tonight, um, I want to say thank you very much. I appreciate your support. Um, I love you guys. Thank you. And I say each and every week, if God allow you to wake up tomorrow, make tomorrow your masterpiece. I'll see you next week, and God bless you. Bye now. Bye-bye.
We really hope you enjoyed this episode of Lowe's More, the Blueprint Podcast. Stay connected and follow us at our website, www.lowesmore.com. That's L-O-W-E-S-M-O-O-R-E.com. You can also join the discussion on Twitter at Lowe's More and on Facebook at Lowe's More Jr. As always, thank you for pushing your mindset towards a better reality. This concludes the most thought-provoking portion of your day. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast to stay fully up to date with everything we're up to. Until next time, be kind to yourself and each other. What they teaching is a joke. I ain't buying it like I'm broke. Insufficient funds for insignificant.